Hi guys! Sa video na ito ay makikita natin kung paano gamitin ang principles ng parallelogram law in dealing with force system problems. Makikita din natin dito ang application ng iba't ibang basic concepts in dealing with these kinds of problems. At maunawaan natin ang iba't ibang mga advantages ng mga ito kapag ginamit sa pag ng problems. Ngayon, puntahan natin ang problems. Ang sabi sa problem, a force P having a magnitude of 150 kN and directed as shown as acts upon a body on an inclined plane as indicated. If the component of P perpendicular to the plane is 60 kN, Find all the values of y. I'd like you to look at this uh, requirement. In the problem, it says, we are required for all the values of y. Meaning, there could be okay, several values of y that would satisfy the given problem. So let us go back to this illustration. In the problem, there, there is a 150 kN load that is acting at an inclination of Y vertical to one horizontal. Okay, upon the body that rests on a plane whose inclination is two vertical Y vertical and two horizontal. And from here, we are required to solve for all the values of Y such that the component of P perpendicular to the plane is 60 kN. Okay, so let us uh, show it this way. So in order to solve, in order for us to solve the problem, let us indicate first, okay, the, or label first the inclination or the inclined plane, and let us call this as our U. And assume natin na there is a perpendicular axis along U, and we call it as Y. I'm sorry, V. We're going to, okay, apply the concept of the parallelogram law. Then we can resolve P into its component parallel to U and perpendicular to U. And how are we going to do it? To do it, let us try to imagine looking at the tail of the force P. And then if we are going to draw a line parallel to the direction of this inclined plane, then we shall have this component. Similarly, if we shall be drawing from the tail of this force P, a line parallel to V or in other word, a line, perpendicular to you, then this will be our a component. This component that I have shown has a magnitude as indicated on the problem as 60 kN and that is the component of P perpendicular to you. This component represents the, per, uh, the component of P parallel to the inclined plane. And we are required to solve here the values of that y so that okay, this 150 would have, would have a component of 60 kN load in the direction perpendicular to V. The problem actually is very, very simple as uh, this can be okay, solved using Pythagorean theorem. As you would see, there is a triangle here, a right triangle that is formed upon drawing okay, the parallelogram. parallelogram. And with this, we can see that this angle may be assigned as theta. And after assigning this angle theta, we can now express the relationship between PV, P, and the angle theta. So that sine of the angle theta shall be equal to PV over P. And if this will be substituted, this will give us a value of 60 over 150. And this is equivalent to 2 over 5. Maybe after establishing this relationship, I guess that you would, your plan is uh, to immediately compute for the value of theta because we are already given this relationship that, okay, sine of theta is equal to 2 fifth. And maybe your intention is to immediately compute for the value of the angle theta. Actually, that's correct, but somehow, you might miss some of the possible answers or answers if you do it. 
because in the problem as i have said as it is indicated we are required to solve all the possible values of a y and there could be several values if we will be using the calculator to solve for this angle theta and then use the angle that you will be getting in solve for the, solving for the value of y then you will be might be possibly be given a value of one one value of y and that could not be enough because there could be several values of y and to do it we apply the basic concepts that we have learned either in trigo and in algebra because why is what is unknown in the problem then why should be involved in an equation so that we can do it by a drawing a horizontal line here so that we can now express the relationship between this angle theta and that of the value of y because this angle that represents the inclination of p will also be and this angle that represents the inclination of uh, k the plane okay will be related to the angle theta will be related to the angle theta and because this a is equal to this angle and this b shall be equal to that angle hence establishing the relation between k okay, a b and theta we can say that theta is equal to the sum of a plus b as shown here sum of a plus b now if you will be okay, applying sine of both sides then we can say that sine of a or sine of theta is equal to sine of a plus b and applying here okay you still recall the sum and difference of two angles recalling trigonometric functions of the sum and difference of two angles therefore sine of theta will be equal to sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine b but what are the values of the functions of the angles a and b in particular what is sine a what is cosine a what is sine b and what is cosine b let us go back to the original a original figure that we have okay considering this triangle the inclination of uh, a the force p which is inclined at y vertical and one horizontal knowing this size of the triangle considering that this is the angle a the opposite side is uh, y and the adjacent side is a therefore the hypotenuse of the triangle can be taken as the square root of one plus y squared that is the application of the pythagorean theorem Okay, so that we can express the function of that angle A and that sine of A being the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse will be equal to y over the square root of 1 plus y square. And that the magnitude of the cosine A is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse which is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus y square. Similarly, looking at the triangle okay, representing the inclination of the inclined plane, having the angle B, okay, or the, uh, the ratio of the inclination and that of the angle B, we can compute for the hypotenuse as the square root of y squared plus 4 squared. And so from here, we can express the function of the sine of angle B being the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse that is equal to y over the square root of 4 plus y square and cosine of that angle b being equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse which is equal to 2 over the square root of 4 plus y square now going back to this uh, a function that we have that sine of theta is equal to sine of a cosine of a plus cosine of a sine b if those angles Okay, those functions will be substituted with this corresponding values that we have computed then what shall we have so substituting the value of sine a which is this one we shall have a okay, sine a for cosine b which is this one for cosine a and sine of b so this becomes now the equation for sine of theta now simplifying the equation we shall have 
sine of theta being equal to combining terms and getting the least common denominator which is the product of the square root of 1 plus y squared multiplied by 4 plus y squared this gives us a the sum of 2y plus y over the square root of the over the square root of the quantity 1 plus y squared multiplied by 4 plus y squared which uh, shall be equal to a finally simplified into 3y over that square root of the quantity 1 plus y squared a multiplied by 4 plus y squared now if you're going to substitute the value of sine of theta going back this is the ratio of 60 over 150 which is these values therefore a, this can be simplified into a 2 over the square root of 5 which is equal to 3y over the square root of 4 plus 5y squared plus y to the fourth this being the product of these two quantities now if we're going to simplify the equation by cross multiplying and then squaring both sides of the equation and this becomes 2 times the quantity of the square root of 4 plus 5y squared plus y, squ y to the fourth is equal to 15y and then squaring both sides this becomes 4 times the quantity 4 plus 5y squared plus y to the fourth equal to 225y squared now if we will be dividing both sides of the equation by 4 okay this becomes the equation and then simplifying combining the similar terms okay so we shall have this as y to the fourth minus 205y 205 over 4y squared coming from the difference between 5y okay minus 225 over 4 which is equal to negative 205 over 4 y squared plus 4 shall be equal to 0 so what happens now to this this actually becomes what a quadratic equation in y squared which can be solved using the quadratic formula now solving for y squared using the quadratic formula what's the formula for that that is actually the square root of b squared or negative b plus the square root of plus or minus the square root of b squared all over 2a that is Substituting the value we have here, okay, 205 over 4 is actually the value of b, this one. Okay, multiplied by b squared, minus 4, a, z, all over 2a. So when we simplify this one, taking first the value of y squared for the positive, we shall have the first value of y squared, which is equal to 51.171a3. So from here, okay, taking the square root of both of y, Okay, take the square root of uh, y sub 1. So we will have here y1, okay, which is equal to 7.15 positive. And the other one is the negative of 7.15. Whereas if we're going to take the negative sign here, we shall be getting the second values of y square. And that y square will be equal to 0 0.078168 which when squared or is taking uh, which when uh, extracted okay uh taking the square root of y so we shall be having another pair of values of y which is equal to y sub 3 that is positive 0 0.279585 and the other one is the negative 0 0.279585 so so that you have here the four values of y that is plus and minus 7.15 and then plus or minus 0 0.279 585 now how are we going to interpret the values that we, ha we have taken so in to interpret the values okay let us now try to okay, redraw the illustration now following the values of the inclination of the plane and that of the load okay using the computed value of the y for the since there are four values of the y this that would indicate four scenarios of how the plane and the force are directed such that if we are to consider the first value of y whose magnitude is plus 7.15 then this would be okay, the inclination of the plane and that okay, the load would be inclined at that direction okay, this is positive hence we would expect that both the plane and the uh, force would be directed in the upward direction okay. the value of p is equal to 150 that way and the angle theta would be this angle, the angle between the plane 
and the force p from this measured from this point up to that point which is actually measured with uh in terms of the two angle a and b here is our angle a and that is our angle b and the component of p perpendicular to the plane would be represented by this direction so this is the scenario when the value of p is positive 7.15 whereas okay for the other value when the value is uh, negative 7.15 that sign that indicates, okay, that sign that uh, uh, we have here for the next value indicates that the direction of the inclined plane as well as of that load is or are directed in the downward direction. As a force, uh, the plane would be directed in this direction while okay, that load would be directed in this direction. Okay, the value of P is 150. Where is our angle theta? Angle theta shall be this angle measured from the inclined plane. And which are the angle theta, which is the sum of the two angles A and angle of B. And the magnitude of the perpendicular component of P along the plane would be indicated by this direction. For the other value of uh, a, the force, I'm sorry, the value of Y, which is positive 0.279585. Okay, that is positive, meaning okay, the inclination and as well as the force would be okay, directed in the upward direction. However, the inclination would be very very small because tangent theta would also be very very small as such you would have here this inclination of the inclined plane the force p would be inclined at the direction which is also inclined at a smaller angle okay okay and that magnitude is equal to 150 kilonewton and the angle theta would be now defined by this angle okay whose sum is the sign sign of uh, sum of angle a and angle b and that the inclination of uh, the P would have a component perpendicular to the plane equal to 60 kilonewton in this direction. Whereas for the fourth value, meaning this is negative, indicating that okay, the value the plane would be directed downward, inclined downward, which is this one, as well as the direction of the force, which is also directed downward, and that is directed downward. Okay, the magnitude of P is 150. Okay, the angle that the P makes with the plane would be defined by this angle, which is the sum of angle A and angle B this way. And that our magnitude of uh, P perpendicular to the plane would be defined by this direction, giving a magnitude of 60 kilonewton. With the presentation that I have shown in this video, I hope that you are able to really understand the application of the parallelogram law as well as the application of the other basic concepts of trigonometry in dealing with problems and i hope that you are able to see and to appreciate okay, the advantages of okay, applying the principles in solving problems in force system if you have questions about the topic you may subscribe to this channel and post your comment your questions so that i could answer your questions in my next video presentation once again guys thank you very much and thank you for subscribing